It is often said that the generations of the current day can only see as far ahead as they can be lifted by the shoulders of the giants who preceded them. However, in the case of the realms of the Circle of the World, these self-same giants, through their own folly, would leave their successors devoid of any path to follow but that of bleak subsistence in a lesser world. Similarly, such a lesser world would breed lesser men, easily manipulated by remnants of those long-lost eras, and it is in this manipulation from the shadows that the crux of our tale can be found. Welcome to the first episode of our series on the history of Joe Abercrombie's First Law series. In this episode, we shall detail the very earliest epoch of this world's history, in which the giants of that time forged and ultimately doomed the setting of our story. In the very earliest days, even before the old time, it is believed that the circle of the world and the other side could not be differentiated, as they served as a single realm. As such, the demons of the other side roamed free, and in doing so, would sow chaos in their wake. However, the greatest contribution to the fate of the circle of the world came in their interbreeding with humanity, causing the creation of half-breeds. Among their number was Almighty Uz, the vanquisher of demons, closer of gates, and father of the world, who would cause the hellish spawn's undoing. Uz, as a devil blood, was given incredible gifts due to his demon half, and rose up against the chaotic beings which threatened his world, banishing them and sealing the gates between the realms. This great act allowed the humans of the time to flourish, providing them with the chance to live out their lives devoid of the fear that the demonic beings of the other side had long wielded against them. Uz had four children, Juvens, Canedius, Badesh, and Glustrad, the eldest three of whom he bestowed the three pure disciplines of magic, and asked of them to restore order to the world. Juvens received the gift of high art, which allowed him to draw power from the other side, and in doing so, change the world around him. Canedius was granted the art of making, whereby he could shape worldly materials into otherworldly artifacts of unimaginable power. Badesh was bestowed with the art of spirit talking, whereby he could talk to the spirits and make them do his bidding. Of the last of his children, Glustrod, Uz provided him naught else but his blessing, which would cause great suffering for the denizens of the world in the days to come. Uz would then go on to leave the world in the hands of his sons, but not before requesting that they obey the first and second laws at all costs. The first law was as follows. It is forbidden to touch the other side directly, forbidden to communicate with the world below, forbidden to summon demons, forbidden to open gates to hell. This statement was in and of itself inherently contradictory, as all magic comes from the other side, the very magic which Uzi's sons had been granted the blessings to utilize by their father. The second law was as follows. It is forbidden to eat the flesh of men. This second rule was, by its very nature, the picture of clarity. However, its role within this story going forward was to be a substantial one. Each son was to take a different path, which was to influence the faith of the world in extreme and varied manners. The eldest of the sons, Juvens, during the old time, found a tribe of men living by the river Aus, and would give to them a great many gifts, bringing them from the barest elements of civilization to become the greatest polity of their day. The old empire, as it would become known, built its seat in the enormous city of Alcus, and would be remembered as the city of the greatest men of their time, and of all the ages to come. Although each emperor would ascend to the throne and forge their own legacy, Juvens would remain at their side, immortal and eternally wise, guiding the empire to suit his grand designs. Of the great emperors, Stolicus is remembered as the finest military strategist and tactician of the empire's heyday, and remains a heavily quoted individual even to this day. Emperor Calica is remembered for going against Juvens and urging caution when expanding the empire eastwards. However, Juvens would win out in this debate, causing the empire to reach its greatest ever extent. The last emperor mentioned in this tale is Scarpius, whose philosophizing in the role of emperor would define what it truly meant to be a citizen of such a mighty state, and also decried the decadence which threatened to overtake all such nations. Uzi's second son, Canedius, would travel to the land which would become known as Adua, and there he would raise a mighty building known as the House of the Maker, which would serve as his workshop and abode. 
denizens of this land at the very center of the circle of the world would begin to worship Canedius, serving as his disciples and providing the manpower required for his great works. The annals recorded little of the third son Badesh. However, Glustrod, the youngest of the brothers, begged his elder siblings to share their talents. None were forthcoming, for one and all they rejected him. Juvens, while fostering the great nation of the old empire, brought to his side individuals who could aid him in his works. The first such apprentice was a man by the name of Byers, who was taught the principles of high art and took to his studies with aplomb. However, Juvens soon took another apprentice from the region of Kanta, who was named Kalul. This was to have brutal repercussions, as the two men, proud and arrogant beyond all measure, would argue, constantly growing increasingly jealous of each other and forming an intense rivalry. Juvens would take on 12 apprentices in total, forming the Order of the Magi, Bayaz, Kalu, Conil, Lulwe, Zacharis, Leru, Carnalt, Anselmu, Broken Tooth, and of the three others, their names are not recorded in the record. As the centuries passed by and the world was forged in the image of the Sons of Uz, dark clouds continued to brew on the far horizon. Glustrod, feeling scorned by his father and brothers alike, became particularly jealous of the works of his eldest brother Juvens and the old empire he had raised from nothing. His bitterness towards his brother was such that he began to study forbidden arts, which caused him to begin to hear voices from the other side, the voices of the long-banished demons. Long did they pour honeyed words into Uzi's youngest ears, and they called upon him to break the second law. Break it he did, consuming the flesh of man, and in so doing, he became the first ever eater, allowing him to attain great magical power through the consumption of human flesh. Likewise, they whispered to him of the location of the seed, a relic of the old time. For as Almighty Uz closed the gates to the other side, sealing off the demons from the circle of the world, portions of the other side were left behind in the world. The largest part by far was the seed, and as a result of this great concentration of raw being from the other side, it was imbued with immense magical properties and power. Glustrod, imbued with such almighty power, drew to himself a vast army of devil bloods, the half-breeds of the old time, and set his sights upon the old empire and the crowning achievement of Juvens, Olcus. Through great treachery were the gates of Olcus opened to the youngest son of Uz and his host, with the city being conquered in short order. For the first day following the conquest, the city was handed over to his horde of devil bloods to rape, slaughter, and destroy as they wished. Lustrod also saw to it that every statue of Juvens within the city was defaced, so as to be unrecognizable in all the centuries to come to the weary strangers who were to pass through the devastated ruins of the city of emperors. Upon hearing of the malicious treachery of his brother, Juvens sent word to his remaining brothers, seeking aid to reclaim Alcus. Badesh agreed to come with all haste to his brother's aid, but Canedius refused to do so, holding that his work in the House of the Maker was an all-consuming project, requiring his full attention. Therefore, Juvens and Badesh were left to raise an army of their own to lay low their brother, who had stooped so low as to break the second law. A terrible war was waged against Glustrod's forces, which caused great loss of life and devastation within the old empire. However, before long, Badesh and Juvens were essentially victorious, besieging their brother within the high walls of Alcus with no feasible chance of surviving the conflict to come should the defenses fall. A desperate Glustrod would therefore risk all on one final gambit, which was to bring with it devastating consequences. Glustrod would attempt to utilize the seed to open the gates long sealed by his father Uz to the other side, potentially bringing a chance of victory. However, he would make one minor mistake due to the haste necessitated by the sheer desperation of his current situation, and in so doing, great power was released from the seed devoid of form or purpose for being. This instantly destroyed the youngest sons of Uz, from which the body of Glustrod would never be recovered. In terms of the wider consequences, Alcus was effectively razed to the ground and left as a poisoned wasteland, never to recover from the devastation wrought by the seed. Following this great destruction, Juvens, at the head of his army, entered Alcus, whereupon one of his young soldiers found the seed. Although Juvens was left unharmed and suffered no ill effects from the seed, his soldiers were not so lucky. 
an entire legion of battle-hardened veterans in his army was consumed by some form of unknown illness, which wasted them from the inside out and caused them to die horrible, agonizing deaths. Juvens recognized the great power of the seed, and initially decided to give it to his brother Canedius, who believed he could turn this most evil of relics to a far more righteous end within the House of the Maker. While it lay within the House of the Maker, Canedius toiled over it, yet he would soon learn of the impact it could have upon others from extended exposure. His daughter Ptolemy dwelt within the house. She suffered a particularly prolonged exposure to the seed, which changed her. Distrust was soon to grow between the two brothers, Juvens and Canedius, with the former no longer believing the seed should be entrusted to the latter. As such, Juvens, Canedius and Badesh journeyed to the far western edge of the world, upon the Isle of Shibulian. There, the seed was given up to the spirit of the island, and Badesh, using the talent bestowed upon him, instructed the spirit to keep it safe, and yield it to only the individual who carried the staff of Juvens. The mistrust between Canedius and Juvens would continue to grow, and eventually centered around the fate of the first of the Magi, Baez. However, this is a tale for our next video on the History of the First Law series which will focus on the fates of the Sons of Uz, the roles of the Magi in the world they now found themselves leading, and the stark decline to follow. The next few videos in this series will be dedicated to the efforts of the Magi to forge a new path forward in the circle of the world, but we're planning to cover the battles of many other fantasy, sci-fi and space opera universes, so make sure you have subscribed and pressed the bell button. Please consider liking and sharing as it helps immensely, and don't forget to comment. We will try to read and respond to every comment, as we want to know what you think about this video and which videos you hope to see in the future. This is the Wizards and Warriors channel, and we'll catch you on the next one.